He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. marriage, the desire of every woman is to conceive and birth her children. But what happens when this desire is delayed, sometimes one year, three years, five years, ten years or more down the line? You are welcome to today's episode of Chapters, and today we are talking about the subject of infertility. My guest in the studio is someone who has walked down this road, and she has written her story in a book chronicling how she overcame infertility. She's Mrs. Inneka Kiari. She's a wife. She's a mother of two adorable children. She's a teacher of the word. And she's also the author of today's book, Breaking Through the Haze. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Chapters. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. And I must mention that you came all the way from Patakot River State. That's right. <laughs> to be with us in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So I came across your book. Hmm. One of those my usual times when I go to a certain bookshop, Latana, and I saw it. After reading it, I knew that I had to speak with you. I, I think your story is one that I found quite um, enlightening. Okay. And, you know, which, which is why I said we needed to talk to you to just, for those that have not read the book, to give us some form of education as to how you overcame your infertility. And for those that have read it, to just you know give us a deeper understanding to the interesting that you said. So I will not tell the story; it is your story. <laughs> so give us a background to as to when you got married and you know how the journey began. Because I remember I said you got married in two thousand and seven. Yes, I got married in two thousand and seven, um, and my husband and I didn't. It's not something we prayed about. We thought it was going to be automatic. So that's why we didn't expect this kind of challenge. It was totally unexpected. But um, my husband noticed it at first because he noticed I haven't seen my period, uh, my monthly circle. And he thought I was pregnant already. But I told him, <laughs> but I told him that, oh, no, that's natural with me. It, it was already natural. It seemed normal to me, but it's actually abnormal. Mm. And um, it, it sounded abnormal to him, so he decided we should go to the hospital to get some medical advice. And that was the beginning of um, our journey to overcome infertility. Now, the not seeing of your menstrual cycle, I want us to talk about that, because okay. like you said, it was normal to you. Okay. But fast forward into some parts of the book, you then realize that this, um, the erratic cycle of mm -hmm. a period actually started years back mm -hmm. based on setting things mm -hmm. that you were doing as a child, which then led to one of the reasons for the infertility. Tell mm -hmm. us about that, the realization of that. Okay, um, as a growing child, as a young girl, I wanted to be a model. <laughs> and so, and I had no good knowledge on um, weight loss. I thought the only way to keep myself thin was to starve myself, and so I mm. deprived myself of the nutrients that my body needed. Mm. And, and I didn't know I was doing any kind of damage to my body. And fast forward years after, and, uh, my circles became very, very erratic, increasingly erratic, to the extent that I, could, I was seeing my menstruation um, twice or three times a year. Wow. Yes. And you didn't think, they were, I mean, you just thought... I was so naive. I, um, maybe because I didn't think too much about pregnancy, so it wasn't an issue to me. Okay. okay. Yes, so I, I just didn't think about that. I didn't know that this is a symptom of infertility. Hmm. So, so it was time for me to, to bring forth children. children. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing you said was obviously, and which is what um, um, expectant parents will do, so you went to see a doctor, mm -hmm. and the doctor then said the first thing to do is... Surgery. <laughs> the first doctor we went to wanted to perform what he called a simple surgery to find out why 
I wasn't menstruating. And even though my husband and I didn't have any kind of medical background, but it sounded odd to use surgery as a tool of diagnosis. Yes. And so we were backed out and we left the hospital, never returned, and took our time to get a good, a real a gynecologist. And by the time we got a doctor, uh, the doctor explained to us that this is an issue. Uh, if you do not menstruate, then you are not producing eggs that will be fertilized. And that was when we knew that, okay, this is a big deal. But at first, I thought it was going to be a quick fix. Mm. Give me a drug, I take the drug, and, and the drug everything will be flowing. fine. But um, I wasn't responding to treatment. And the treatment went on and on and on, and the, you know, it kept on increasing. To the extent I even took a particular drug that was originally made for breast cancer. But because they told me it's going to help me, I took it. And I was reacting to the drug. Sometimes my, uh, my tummy bloats. Sometimes it, it makes me age, lines, mm. white hairs. You know, because wow. every medicine has its own, its own effects. effects. So, and, but I was taking it desperately. At a point, I was taking a particular kind of drug that the doctor told me, okay, you've taken this one for too long, you need to stop. But secretly, I was taking it because I was so desperate. Mm. <laughs> and um, there was no result. I wasn't responding to treatment. Now, and this is where I think your story got interesting. Mm. So one of the things we've not mentioned is you're a person of faith. Mm. You're a Christian. You're a Christian before you got married. You're, you're, mm -hmm. I mean, you're a born-again Christian. Mm -hmm. And initially, when this ha happened, the first thing was obviously you went to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. you prayed about it and just mm -hmm. said, okay, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like a headache. <laughs> exactly. I don't think I even prayed about it. We just went to the hospital. Let's correct this. So we just went to the hospital. We didn't pray about it. And I was a Christian before I got married, but I didn't have a relationship with God. I was a Christian by birth. You know, what you feel in the form. What religion, Christianity. I went to church. I loved God. I was a good girl. But I didn't have a relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for my waiting period. Mm. It, it, it taught me. It made me realize that I needed a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And that drew me close to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gave me insight to uh, my challenge. So, and that's for me the crux of your story and that was where the journey to overcoming infertility mm -hmm. began but we'll go on a short break now when we come back you're then going to take us through step by step okay. how you began the journey of overcoming infertility okay. we have to go on a short break now but i must tell you this is a very interesting story we'll be right back <laughs> Yeah, welcome back to Chapters. And on today's episode, we're talking about infertility. My guest telling the story of how she overcame infertility. So before we went on a break, you had told us that one of the things that had happened to you was when you, you, you were a Christian, mm -hmm. and but you were not very close to God. Mm -hmm. And this journey of infertility was one of the things that pushed you mm. to God. So how did that then come about? How did you feel, you know, how did that, your relationship with God and infertility, how did you merge those two points together okay um you know we go through everybody goes through one challenge or the other and um it's a choice you make you 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 allow your challenge to push you away from god or you allow it to draw you close i think what worked for me was because of the background i had i was a christian so i knew that okay you have a problem you pray right you go to the bible but i was praying and i wasn't hearing from god I, this it was now time to be practical with your Christian life. Mm -hmm. Hear from God, move, and get results. You know, so I, I needed that, and I didn't know how to get that. I, I hear people say the Holy Spirit told me this. I hear people, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know how does that happen. Now I need this because I need to know what's going on. Mm. The doctors didn't understand what was going. Why I wasn't responding to treatment. Um, I wasn't ex responding to treatment. No one could tell me I was. I was just in, like in a haze, so I needed some, someone to reveal. And I know that the Holy Spirit is a truth-giving spirit. So I decided to work on my relationship with the Holy Spirit, even though I had no clue on how to do that. So I threw myself into every kind of church activity. You said so when yeah, you started doing all sorts, I was, all sorts of things. I was in church Monday to Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, I thought that would bring me closer to God, but it didn't. Yeah, you know, I learned the hard way that what God wants is a personal relationship with mm -hmm. you. He, he wants you to talk to him. He wants to talk to you in a unique way that suits you. Yes. So um, it took me a while going round in circle 
and but God is merciful. He sees your heart. Mm. When he sees how you, when you want him, if you draw close to him, he will draw close to you. So he saw my heart and he, he burned through my haze and made me realize what I needed to do. And so I started reading the Bible, studying the Bible. I went beyond just reading the Bible. Started I started studying the Bible, you know, and, and praying. And the Holy Spirit teaching me how to pray. And I was desperate. I wanted to hear, Father, you can talk to me. Yes. You talk to every other person that I hear that's, who say you talk to them. So talk to me. And um, as I, when I started searching, I found. So what did you then begin to do? Okay, so the Holy Spirit led me to study and know about my diagnosis and the symptoms. What Before, was your diagnosis at this point? It was time? called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Even though I didn't have cyst in my womb, but the doctor, I was exhibiting every other symptom. And it's called a syndrome because it's, there are lots of symptoms. Another woman with PCOS can be exhibiting absolutely different, different symptoms. symptoms from you. So I don't really need to have a um, cyst in my womb, but I, ex I was ex exhibiting a whole lot of uh, symptoms of PCOS. So... It, I was diagnosed with PCOS, and I didn't even know what PCOS meant. Mm. I was just taking the drugs the, host, the doctors were giving to me. So I started studying about the diagnosis and learning about my body, the female reproductive system. So you went by yourself to start doing yes. research. Yes, the Holy Spirit led me to do that. And, you know, when the Holy Spirit gives you an instruction, he guides you. Mm -hmm. And not too long after the Holy Spirit guided me and instructed me to study. He led me to a particular website. He said so. Yeah, long before that, people told me, the doctors told me, and other write-ups told me that PCOS has no cure. You can only manage it. And um, the, no one was even sure how you get PCOS. But this man talked about how PCOS... That's in this article that you read In this article, online. yes. And he talked about how you can, how PCOS comes about and how it can be reversed naturally. By and that, that, tickled my, that tickled my interest. You know, I wanted something natural because I've been experiencing negative effects from the drugs I was taking. So if something is going to reverse anything naturally and no negative effect, I was interested. And I studied and he... It made me realize, I got his book, and it made me realize that the challenge is just what I've been putting in my mouth, <laughs> you know? And Your diet and the food that My you diet, eating. yes. And um, that took me back to history, uh, my childhood, how I've abused my body by eating wrong and uh, eating the wrong kind of food. So what was this diet that you then had to now go on? It's an all-protein diet. And um, it's supposed to heal the body. But I'm very careful talking about this diet because it's not one style fits all. Fits all. It's, um, it will help anybody going through PCOS, but there are so many kinds of um, reasons for infertility. Mm -hmm. So you then changed your diet. So at this point in time, and one interesting thing you said in the book was when you read this article and you realized this, you then went back to the doctors mm -hmm. to say, oh, you read this and they said if you change your diet. But the doctors said it wasn't going to work. Mm -hmm. How did you, so, and even then, you did not listen to the doctors. You mm -hmm. went with what you felt that you believed yes. at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Why did you make that decision? Because at that point, I had worked on my relationship with the Holy Spirit. I was hearing from, the, I had a relationship with the Holy Spirit, so I was convicted. I had a strong conviction that this will work. Mm -hmm. So I took it to them, and you know when the Holy Spirit talks to you, it contradicts popular opinion. So I wasn't really surprised when they told me that it wouldn't work. Besides, doctors do not really get nutritional training, nutritional training. So I was armed with that, with that information, and that didn't throw me off guard. So they refused that, and, um, but I insisted. I went on the diet, and I got results. Before we talk about the results, let's talk about also just the process of waiting. Okay. I know that your waiting was about four years, mm -hmm. uh, from between 20, 2007 Seven. to 2011. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is that waiting period mm -hmm. where people miss it. Mm -hmm. One of the chapters you wrote was recounting past victories, mm -hmm. because there were times where it seemed like you were so broken mm -hmm. and you wondered, you know, God, why me? How, what, what did you, how did you learn to think of the things God had done for you in the past to then help you in this present condition? Because like you said in the book, it was one of the hardest things mm -hmm. your husband ever mm -hmm. had to go through mm -hmm. that you didn't prepare for. You know, it's very easy, I understand that, to fall into this um, pity party. But we need to deliberately look for mm. some kind of encouragement. Yes. 
And remember, I had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I had a background as a Christian. And so it came natural to me. And I think we, it comes natural to us when you, you want God to do something. You say, God, you've done this before. I know you can do this. Even though this looks absolutely different, like this kind of challenge, the infertility was a completely different kind of challenge. But um, I looked at the story of David, and David fought with animals. And um, the biggest battle he ever fought till, uh, at, at the point when he fought with Goliath. Yes. Goliath was a, a human, a professional soldier. And then when I remember the story of David and how David was able to overcome Goliath, even though Goliath was a different kind of challenge, but the way David analyzed it, he looked at it, a different kind of challenge is still a challenge. And the God who saw me through helped me kill a lion and a bear. It doesn't matter what form what, yeah. his challenge is, he will see me through. So that gave me encouragement and I, I uh, drew strength from David's story. But were there days that you went through self-pity? Because, in fact, the oh, story you written about, you said the truth is that self-pity, anger, and frustration mm -hmm. with God are all pointless. Of course, of course. But regardless, there are days Regard when you just mm -hmm. wanted to cry your eyes mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. why, mm -hmm. why, mm -hmm. why? It was very hard for me because, like I wrote in my book, I got married undefied. So it was very hard to accept this. This is not for me. That was my thinking then. I thought, this is not for me. This is for someone else. <laughs> But, um, you know, life won't tell you what it will throw at you. Mm. And it's, um, it's a waste of time asking why. It's just to move Even on though I did it. that, but it gets to a point, you, you wake up from that and then move on and face the challenge and deal with it, yeah. Now, in facing the challenge, there's something you said in your book, in the chapter, Fight the Good Fight of Faith, mm. that I'd like you to explain. You said the key is to change your heart in all sincerity mm. rather than trying to first change your form. Mm. Explain that. You know, as Christians, um, people, when people give their life to Christ, the first thing is to, what they begin to do is to uh, change, to conform to the tradition of the church. Not a particular church, but the church of Christ. Mm. And there is no focus on the inside. Hmm, okay, the focus, should, yeah, the you. focus should be on the inside, allowing God clean up the inside. When the inside is fixed, it will influence outside. But the first thing we go to is to confirm, okay, what, what, what goes on in the Church of Christ? Okay, people cover up, or people say hallelujah when they're talking, or people. And so we specialize in the art of being a Christian. Mm, but and we not do the not. The heart, H E R. Yes, and not the heart of a Christian, yeah. That's powerful. That's mm -hmm. actually very mm -hmm. thought provoking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and because I think this also was your journey after you said, like, you're done, you're staying in church Sunday to Sunday, and you were doing the work, everything, and mm -hmm. you just seemed nothing mm -hmm. was changing. Mm -hmm. It came to the point of realization. Fantastic. And so after that, what then interests me? You said you left your job. So you were working at the yes, time. Yes, I was working. And you felt that, you know what, I need to now face this matter of infertility head mm -hmm. on. And mm -hmm. you left your job. Mm -hmm. I thought that was quite a drastic. Why did you feel you needed to, to sort of, it was like you wanted to cut off from everything to yes. just focus? Yes. Um, maybe it's peculiar to me. I, I, I just can't handle, I don't believe in handling. Not that I can't handle it, I can actually do it. But I don't believe in juggling too many things. I don't believe you will get results when you're juggling too many things. Let me now, read a quote okay. you said on multitasking. So you said, in fact, you can only truly focus your attention on one thing at a time. When we try to juggle many things, mm -hmm. when you try to attain the worldly concept mm -hmm. of multitasking, mm -hmm. which is just another word mm -hmm. for the inability mm -hmm. to focus on a set goal. That's the truth. And having it all, it might appear that we are making significant process in our lives, but then the truth is something will have to give. Something will give something and I know that now I'm not saying everybody trying to conceive should resign I, uh -huh. I, I yeah I could I was I, I could afford to do that okay but not everybody can afford to do that but whatever it is taking your attention try to streamline trying to focus on that which is important to you hmm. and get results that's the message here fantastic and the next note that I was talk about was your chapter on the place of knowledge okay I, I found that because the, the you what you did was you balanced faith mm. and knowledge. Okay. So you came to a place where even if you were praying, it wasn't mm. you know, just now the, do the miraculous, mm. let me just consider, mm. let me do this. You discovered something and you really went into studying about the issue mm. and then 
taking action, mm. which is one thing you said. You said it's one thing to <coughs> know, it's one thing to do. Mm. And in the place of doing, it wasn't easy for you mm. because you were changing your diet as mm. against. Tell us, you know, really says about this change because sometimes, you know, it's even for people, and it's not just in fertility, it can okay. even be in weight loss. Yeah. It can be in building a new character trait mm. and mm -hmm. living bad habits. Mm -hmm. That transition is not always easy. It's not easy. How but did you. You require discipline. The discipline of doing was what I tied to that chapter. Yes. The discipline of doing. The the principle behind the discipline of doing does not bring into consideration our excuses. For example, the example you brought up, if you want to lose weight, your the fat in the body won't listen to the fact that you're tired or you're lazy. You need to change your diet. You need to prep your meal. Because if you're surrounded with unhealthy food, you will eat it when you're hungry. You need to prep your meal. You need to exercise and burn that fat. And the discipline of doing requires that you walk towards your goal. W-O-R-K. Mm. Walk towards your goal. You can't just wish it. It doesn't work that way. You need to walk towards You need to follow through with your plan. That's the only way to go about it. There's no shortcut to it. So if it's a habit you want to break, you follow through. It's not enough just to pray. There are things you need to do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you follow through. And then and it, you will break it. You will break that Certainly. habit. Yeah. Certainly. Mm -hmm. That's going to break now. When we come back, I'm sure everybody's wondering, okay, so after all of this, what then finally happens? Okay. <laughs> so we'll conclude the story right. when we come back from this break. Okay. Much more after the short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Yeah, welcome back to Chapters. And on today's episode, we're talking about the subject of infertility. And Mrs. Nika Kiari has been educating us on how she overcame her case of infertility in a very interesting, different way, where you balanced faith, okay. medicine, personal knowledge. You became your own doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Mm. But there's something that I, I wanted to read, um, and this was in your balance of prayer mm -hmm. when you were praying and asking God and you said prayer is going to do what it will mm -hmm. do but it will not do what you have to do mm -hmm. faith goes beyond believing in mm -hmm. trusting in or hoping on God mm -hmm. faith is all of those things mm -hmm. backed up with actions mm -hmm. that are obedient to God's spoken written or inspired instructions mm -hmm. I like this because a lot of the times especially as Christians we think prayer is the end mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it's literally a means to an end mm -hmm. that after praying, you then receive instructions, instructions. that God expects you to go and mm -hmm. do. What are some of the things that you began to do after based on the instructions that you received? Okay, so I changed my diet. I went on an all-protein diet and I started to exercise. And um, so I went back to the hospital uh, for a hormonal profile. Yeah, and by this time, the doctor then said my hormones, hormones were, were balanced. balanced. And I didn't want to wait anymore. I had the unction from the Holy Spirit. I was led to go to the hospital for medical assistance. Let me read a, a page from my book. Okay. Page 110. Okay. Not everyone will feel led to use art or other methods, but trying to figure out why the Holy Spirit led me to use assisted reproductive technology after leading me to healing through natural methods previously is like trying to find out why our Lord Jesus sometimes performed the same miracle in different ways. Hmm. Now, there are three places our Lord Jesus Christ healed uh, a blind man. And it, it's not a repetition of story. There are three different blind men. And he healed them in different, different ways. ways. So trying to find out why I still went back to the hospital yes, after people the Holy Spirit. Yes, people the question, why didn't you then still have natural conception? Yes, it's the Holy Spirit that leads. It's not one style fits all. It's not one cut fits all. And that is why we need a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that we don't remain at a spot for too long. Mm -hmm. When the Holy Spirit leads you, go ahead and you'll get results. If it's from the Holy Spirit, you will get results. Mm. Because when I went back to the hospital, the medication I was given worked immediately. And then I, I, like had, I had my children. I like that. I like that because mm -hmm. truly speaking, like you said, and there are people that do medications, med the medical, of assisted, a, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So it's not that 
because you do it, it works. I'm very careful about talking about this because um, in my experience, you, you, women, you know, go, going through infertility is a hard thing and so they are so desperate. And when you talk about that, they forget about the process of working with the Holy Spirit, of healing your body uh, through... Or finding the of, knowledge, or yes. finding the roots of what of, issue is. Yes. Because that's one of the things you said. Sometimes you are just treating the symptom. And they rush to that and it doesn't work. Because you need to go through the process. You need to learn what God wants you to learn. Your body needs to heal. You need to understand what is going on with you to get results. Fantastic. And, you, you, you know, because the book is not... I like the book because it's very balanced. Mm. And it was a balance of, you know what, I'm a person of faith, but mm. there are certain things, even in my faith, that I need to unlearn, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to learn, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to begin to do. Yes, exactly. For any woman watching this now who is going through... Mm -hmm. infertility what would you, what would your advice be to her i would tell her be true to yourself and be true to god develop a relationship with the holy spirit and do not consent to impossibility when it comes to conceiving if god has created you a woman and he has put that desire in you to bring forth children then you will bring forth children all you need to do, and he has given you your children already, what you need is to establish a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that you can possess your possession. Thank you for writing this book. Where, where can people get copies of this book? It's available on Conga, and Latana Bookshop, Amazon. Uh, the Kindle version is also on Amazon. Thank you so much for writing this book. Thank you for sharing your story. And thank you for making yourself available to other women to help them through their journey. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I want to say thank you to everyone who has watched today's episode of Chapters. I'm sure that, like me, you have learned. It's been an enlightening episode. And I think for me, it's that there's a place for faith. There's a place for knowledge. There's a place for seeking wisdom. But most importantly, there's a place for taking action. And like she said, deep deepening our relationship with the Holy Spirit and understanding what God requires for us to do. So if you're watching and you're going through a period of waiting for your child, just like her, your story will end in praise. It is not the end of the world and God will show you what to do. And as you take the steps very soon, you carry your children in your arms. I want to say thank you all so much for watching. But remember, it is not just about what you know, but what you do with what you know. Mm -hmm. Until the next episode of Chapters, God bless you.